In this lesson, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the different types of elements you want to include in a form. I'm in Dreamweaver, which is my HTML editor of choice, and I have the contact form open. It's called contact.html in case you want to follow along. In here, I'm looking at the form and I'm actually in split view. In Dreamweaver, you have the ability to go into split view where you can see the code and also see the design at the same time. This is a very basic form. It simply has text fields and a text area at the bottom, and each one of these items has a label with it. And then at the bottom, there's simply a button. The user would click that button. It would automatically email the form. So when you're working with forms, you have a variety of different elements you can choose to add. If you go into your code and click somewhere, and then go up to Insert, form, you'll see the listing of a lot of the different things that you can use. So we have text fields in ours and there is a text area. And again, to review, the difference is a text field looks like this. A text area gives them multiple lines and in this particular case they can actually drag it and make it longer if they want to. So if you're asking someone to give a very lengthy answer or there's a chance there might be a very lengthy answer, the text area is a really good choice. Other options, and again, you need to click in your code and go to Insert Form in order to see them. We have buttons. Buttons can have different actions applied to them, so they could go to another page in the site, they could open a URL, or in the case of our form, they can actually submit the form uh, via email. We have checkboxes and radio buttons, which you might be familiar with on the web. The difference between them typically is that a radio button gives you a number of different choices and you choose one and a checkbox allows you to pick multiple choices. So if you're asking someone what their favorite hobbies are and you have a listing of hobbies, you want to allow them to pick more than one. But if you're asking someone what their number one favorite hobby is, you would use radio buttons, which forces them to choose just one answer. We also have different kinds of list menus. We have uh, different types of images that we can apply. There's a jump menu, which gives you a drop down menu. So if you're giving someone a list of choices, instead of giving them this very lengthy list that appears on the page, a jump menu would allow them to click on it and then give them a drop down menu with all the choices. So these are a few of the more common ones that you can use in forms. And again, we're not using most of those. We're using just a simple text field, a text area, and a button. But when you're working with form fields, in this particular case, these all have labels accompanied with them so that when the information is returned, when the person clicks the submit button, and that information is emailed to me, the information that's returned to me from the form is name equals value. So the name of the field is called name, and then the information in the field that the user entered is called the value. So I don't want to name this field one, field two, and field three. I want to name them so that I know what the information I'm getting is. In my particular case, when I submit this form and someone views it, the answer that I would return is name equals Sally Cox and so forth. So you can actually set these up with whatever name you want, but you want it to make sense so that when that information is returned, you're able to do something with it. So that's just a basic look of some of the more basic design elements when we're creating forms in HTML5.